This is 27.5 from the <coughs> suggested problems. So uh, in this problem, instead of a constant current, it tells us that we have a, uh, a wire where the current as a function of time is going through exponential decay i naught e to the minus time over some constant tau. So what that means, uh, I'm sure you've seen exponential decay, if we were to plot the current versus time, then at time equals zero, it would be at i naught, which you can see by plugging in zero, e to the zero is one, so it's just i naught. And then it goes through the classic shape of exponential decay like that, towards zero. We can think physically, what does this mean? Physically, then, we have a wire like this. And we know the current is the flow of um, charge through some plane in the wire, the amount of charge that flows through that plane. And in class, I defined current as delta Q, the amount of charge that flows per unit of time. But I also told you, sometimes you might just want to write this as the derivative, uh, dQ dt. And this is the time you want to do that. We want to think of this as a, a continuous derivative because we have charge, or we have the current changing in time. So this is a time that we'll actually treat it as a derivative. So if we say, well, the current is dQ dt, then we can say, well, the, the, the dQ dt must be equal to, to this expression. So dQ dt uh, must equal i naught e to the minus time over tau. And then the question it asks is how much charge uh, flows through some point in the wire between times uh, 0 to tau, 0 to 10 tau, and all the way to infinity. So we can come back and look at this plot here. So this is time. And I'm going to label tau about right there. And the question is how much charge flows past this plane from 0 to tau. So there's a few hints that would help you know what to do. One is sort of the, what's the total amount of charge? That might tell you you're going to have to do an integral. If you see dq here, that might tell you this is going to be an integral. So if you were to make this plot and realize that we're really just figuring out the total charge as the area under this curve, because here's dq dt and here's t, that might tell you that it's an integral. It's an integral. Okay, so what we want to do is bring the dt over there and say, okay, and the amount, differential amount of charge that flows is i naught e to the minus t over tau. Differential amount of charge that flows depends on time, and you can see that's right because the current is going down in time. It depends on when you look. So to get the total amount of charge, we just integrate. Integrate both sides. So we integrate the dq to get, well that turns into q. And we integrate here on the limits it says to integrate on, from time equals zero to time equals tau. But this integral is with respect to time. So the integral from zero tau of i naught e to the minus t over tau dt. All right, so integral of an exponent. Uh, exponent isn't too bad. We just uh, divide by the derivative of the part in the exponent and uh, just write the exponent down again. So basically we just say this is uh, i naught. We divide by the derivative of this part with respect to time, with respect to t, is minus 1 over tau. We divide by minus 1 over tau, so we have a minus there. And dividing by 1 over tau is like multiplying by tau. So minus i naught tau, and then we just write e to the minus t over tau. You take the integral of the exponent, you just write the exponent again. And we evaluate that from 0 to tau. 0 to tau, that was part a. Part a was to evaluate it there. Okay, so this is equal to uh, um, minus i naught um, minus i naught tau uh, evaluated here e to the minus t over tau evaluated at t equals tau is e to the minus one. Let's go away. Minus e to the zero. And then this, you can just get this numerical factor. Uh, it turns out to be a negative number. e to the minus 1 is 1 over 
2.73, whatever it is. Uh, and then this is 1. So this, this is smaller than 1 minus 1. It's going to be a negative number. That negative will cancel that negative. And you'll end up with uh, 0.632. So that is the amount of charge. That's the charge that flows past this plane from zero to tau. It's positive, and it should be positive because we are considering the flow of positive charge, and we have current going that way, and everything makes sense. Part B was how much charge do you get if you go from zero all the way to 10 tau? Okay, so you know it's really further than this, but we can think of it as there. So pretty much it's getting really close to zero if you go all the way up to 10 tau. Well, here, everything's exactly the same, except we put a 10 there. So it's minus I naught tau e to the minus t over tau evaluated from 0 to 10 tau. And minus I naught tau e to the minus what? Uh, e to the minus 10. Minus e to the 0, which is basically 1. E to the minus 10 is a very small number. So as we go further and further down, this factor becomes less and less important. That's 1 over 2 point whatever to the 10. It's essentially 0. It's a teeny bit off of here. It makes this slightly less than negative 1, negative 0.999 something. But then that negative still cancels that negative. And in the end, the answer is 0 0.9999. I believe it's 4 nines and a 5. Yes, 4 nines and a 5, I not know. That's B. C says, what if? What if we went all the way to infinity? It basically looked at all the charges that would flow in this exponential decay, and all that means is essentially you put infinity here. E to the minus infinity is 1 over E to the infinity. It's basically 0. So when you integrate all the way to infinity, this number is getting bigger and bigger. It finally becomes 1. So for C, it would just be 